So I've got the wheels and I need to get these things cleaned up. There's some pretty good corrosion on some of the spots. So I'm taking them outside, I'm sandblasting them and then uh, taking a wire wheel tool and get them cleaned up a little bit better so that they can get painted and put some tires on. So I've got it sandblasted and wire wheel and looks a lot better. This wheel definitely is fabrication and quality. This one's a little off. You can see the seam, they need to buff the seam up, right? But got it cleaned up. I'll sand it down one more time and then prime and paint it. But I'm gonna grind this edge down and get it clean, make the wheel look a little, look better than what it was. Just bump on this side too. But, well, now is the time to make it pretty. So I've got these all cleaned up and uh, looking a lot better than they were when I started. So I'm gonna put a coat of paint on them. I'm gonna try to use this uh, engine paint that I've got. Restolium orange. Cherry orange. I'll test it over here a little bit. It seems to match actually pretty good. So I'm gonna get my coat of primer and throw some paint on. So I got the wheels all painted up and let them cure up a few days and then put my new tires on. The tires are just perfect, both the physical size and the look I'm look going for with the tractor. And I decided I wanted to get them tractor down on the ground so that I could play with the steering and stuff. And I used a junk Harbor Freight hoist and the whole thing would lift up the back of the tractor. The jacks, the stands collapsed because the hoist went up too fast. It didn't have good control on it compared to my other hoist and the whole thing fell down on the ground. Fortunately, there wasn't any damage and uh, the tractor actually survived. It would have just like, go down on the hood a little bit. But the tractor uh, steers perfectly and even with the fully steered like that, I can sit on the seat, doesn't get any tippy at all. So I'm really, really happy with uh, how it sits and uh, steers and articulates. And now I just need to work on getting the uh, hydraulic steering in it and get some more plumbing on the hydraulics. And then I want to work on my seat. So I need to make the seat cushion. This seat cushion is in bad shape, obviously. The bottom's all rotted. I'm going to make a new bottom and cushion. But I'm going to sew up a cushion. I measured up the panels, one back panel. One panel goes all the way around the outside, and then the top panel. So I got a 17 by 11, you know, 12 by 3s ish. And then a 3.5, uh, 3.5 feet going around the outside. Uh, but this is like 2 inches, but it's next. I'm going to make it like 4 inches tall on all these side panels and make them work. I got this scrap piece of vinyl. It's not the best vinyl, but it'll work for now. But actually, coincidentally, just the right size. I got three and a half feet this way. I've got enough to do the seat panel in here. And then the front panel I can do over on this other side here. So it's actually just a piece of scrap I had lying around. It's just perfect. So I'm going to cut the pieces out now. So I got the pieces laid out and trimmed out. I'm just going to Sew them together real quick. And here I am sewing the panels together. This is a uh, FAF uh, commercial sewing machine that I picked up to be, do some upholstery work. I've had a couple uh, home machines and I just too hard on them and end up breaking them. So this is a really rugged machine. Unfortunately, it's not a walking foot machine, but it definitely has the power to do what I need to do. I've done some work to that. I've, uh, I installed the servo motor on it, so it's a little more controllable and uh, easier to use for someone like me. And I'm definitely by far not the best at using it, but I managed to get what I need done. And uh, on this time, you'll see me, I'm struggling with the, the thread. It keeps breaking on me, and I finally end up realizing that the uh, unwinding on the bobbin up top there, the, the the spool of thread 
it uh, keeps going sideways and it kinks up and ends up breaking. So I uh, end up switching over to a different thread that was on a different spool with, and it works a lot better. But yeah, I'm just sewing up the the sides and the everything all together. And then once I'm all done with that, you'll see that I do one more um, seam all the way around the outside after I change that thread. You can see me changing it there now. And this thread works a lot better. And I go around the whole piece one more time just to make sure that I get uh, one good stitch all the way around and it's not uh, having any you know, start and stops from each time the thread broke. But it comes out pretty good for what it is. And here's where you can see where I uh, did the uh, stitching of the uh, one last uh, continuous stitch around the whole outside. The whole sewing of the whole thing, figuring out the pieces, and it only took me like 30 minutes. So pretty much a short amount of time, you can get quite a bit of work done. And it nice to have a non-gluey, yucky, broken up seat panel, so... So this is the original seat, and it was just held together with these, these, uh, what are called, little, little hammer-in connectors. It was just, uh, 3 8 plywood. I mean, decent enough for what it was, but it lasted 40 years, of course, 45 years. But, I obviously made it a little better, you know, the seat was all in bad shape. So I redid the the wood on it, and glued it, and used some Craig bit to get it drilled in, sanded it, rounded it up nice and neat. This is a uh, husky kneeling pad for when you're out in a garden or whatever, it works out really nice. So I just put this on here, and I trimmed it with this turkey saw, you know, whatever you use for cutting meat up. The thing works amazingly well. It's just an oscillating saw and it can cut through foam. Super easy. And gives nice clean cuts. Then I glued the halves together with some of this contact cement. So now I'm just gonna round off the edges a little bit, shape it better. Drill in my um, holes for my uh, screw anchors. And then I'll put the cover on. So I got the screw anchors put in and got the seat shaved down a little bit and now I'm going to set the uh, cover on and start nailing it or uh, stapling it into place. So I got the seat all upholstered. I like to redo it when I get the uh, better vinyl. I mean I don't know if this vinyl is going to last forever but at least it's better than sitting on the other. And I completely screwed up like when I was figuring out the seat I didn't realize that the seam was here. I assume that that was the back of the seat being narrower, but I'll, uh, when I redo it, it'll come out a little better. But, I mean, it's, for how much time I got into it, it's pretty, pretty easy. I just got to trim out the holes here for the, for the uh, screws to go in, hold it down to the seat. But, yeah, makes it a little bit nicer to sit on. So thanks for watching this week. Um, didn't get quite as much work done as I wanted to with all the holidays. But hopefully we'll get after it soon. I'm going to start getting the power steering setup set up and continuing work. Please like and subscribe.